This is a game in the uh, AMX 1390, the tier 8 French light tank. Um, really quick tank. Uh, it has a clip. Gun control is kind of bad, but it's fast. It's good scout and uh, uh, a mid to late game brawler as well. Uh, playing Melanovka from the south area. Um, so you can do a couple of things. A lot of times people like to do a scout loop out here just to spot their guys over there. Um, typically I, I like going hill uh, because I think hill is typically underrepresented in pubs. Um, so I'll always head out there first, but I'm going to keep an eye on, on what our mediums do. Um, their team does not have a whole lot of speed aside from their light tanks. Um, so I'm not too worried about them taking hill as long as we send enough up there. Um, if, they, if we send people to the hill, then and I can play through the middle area here. Um, people always used to go through this little lakeside area. They actually changed a, a good part of this map. Um, so it's actually less beneficial to go through here as it is to come up over the top. So even if you're gonna go over to this other ramp, it's usually better to take the top, particularly if you have speed, just because of the way that they reshaped these hills here to give you more protection. Um, so our types are both going up there, right, and they're platooned, so that's a good sign. Um, so I'm going to play the middle. And so there's a couple of different areas that you can play the middle. I'm going to play the more forward bush that's right here next to this tree. You can also play a little bit further back in this bush here. If you play a little bit further back, you spot less. Um, like you'll, uh, you'll notice that I'm able to spot all the way down into this B4 area. Um, and this gives me uh, an opportunity to get an idea and to give our team an idea of, of what their team ascending to the hill and then so there's a ditch on the back side of this a line just like they added a ditch onto the back side of the zero line um, that these tanks that are going up the hill can hide in but neither the 1390 or their type 59 are, are going back in those in those hills which exposes them to fire but unfortunately our, our team does not really hit them so the vulnerability of, of being where where I'm at right now is that if they push their light tank from the other side then it's really easy to, to spot me um, but since their lights did not move forward, um, at least not that far, uh, I, I'm relatively safe where I'm at. So w our types are sort of on this lower level here, which I don't really like to see. The rest of our team is a little bit too far back. They're not really in a position where they can support these types. Um, but that's something that we'll, we'll sort of monitor as time goes on. We haven't seen really much else. Um, they could have sent guys through this back A line over here through the ditch and that would have uh, given them an opportunity to get through mostly unseen um, but taller tanks and, and in particular slower tanks uh, have a difficult time of doing that like this T30 will be lit pretty much the whole time whereas their T69s basically made it most of the way up there without being lit. So they've got a, a lot up on this hill now. One of our heavies went up. We still got a lot of guys camping in the back here. It always makes me very sad to have uh, three big artillery and a T-30 literally sitting in the middle of the field for, you know, 30 seconds or more and not get shot at. And I look up on the hill. We're still doing okay up there. The, the two types are a little bit, a bit outgunned, um, but the health is about even up there. One of our already shot the T-30, so... Thank you, Artie. They moved their 12T across. I, don't, I never feel like playing from inside the base is a very good idea. One of our types up top went down. We still have that heavy there. We've got some guys camping-ish in the back. Our STI is now moving back a little bit. They've moved a couple of heavies down into the southwest, but I still feel like the base is pretty inconsequential because it, it is very difficult to cap here. It looks like we might win the hill, we'll probably win the hill. So what I want to be able to do is make sure that we can pick up these guys over here if they try to push any further, um, ideally save some health on our T-30. And we see that they have a Conqueror driving across the open, which, okay. And so now we have the hill, we have a Type 59 and an IS-3 up on the hill, which is good news. It's a trap! And I get lit there by the uh, 12T that's over in this area right there. So I need to pull back a little bit so that I can't get lit as easily from that side. There's This 12T will end up pushing in this direction though.
And here comes Mr. 12T. It's a trap. And so they've got a T32 on the back of the of the cap and the T32 on that uh, J line. Uh, neither of those guys are, are really a problem. We've come off the hill, which is not what you want to see. You always want to leave at least one guy up on the hill. Um, to keep these guys honest, otherwise it's way too easy for them to to reduce the amount of map control that you have. So that's something that we'll that we'll move to address shortly. Uh, but I want to be able to clear out these guys in the base first. So the little windmill thing is blocking my shots there. And then, so it's really important to reestablish the hill, so we'll go back uphill. They have mostly slow tanks. They got a, they have a Type 62 right there. So that's something that we're going to keep an eye on. Um, watch as this JT-88 will, will go down as we go up on the hill. We still got two heavies out here who are counter pushing out this way, which is not so good of an idea. This Type 59, which probably should never have come down, uh, is headed back up. But uh, the the problem with giving up that hill is that you give like if this T30 is hauled down up there now, you're pretty much SOL. Whereas if you can prevent him, if you can lock him back in there that area, then you're already can just pick away. So their SU-14 killed this JP, JT-88 that was over here, right? So that means their Type 62 is right there. So that's something that we will know. But I need to make sure that the T-30 hasn't pushed up here. And they're pushing a JP up here, but no T-30 yet. So the T-30 is still behind the church, which is good. And then now I'm going to need to go back to deal with this Type 62 that's going to be down here. Our type is up on the hill, which is good. I'm currently reloading. I don't really have shots on a whole lot here. I should I should be heading back down the zero line. There's no reason for me to stay there. And so I need to go find this type and he just gets lit right there. So there's a ditch back here as well that separates the Type 62 from our guys, so I need to try to get him stuck out here if I can. So we're able to track him, but he repairs, and then he pushes beyond our view. If you watch, one of our artillery is moving south, so he's going to be able to spot him. Our IS-3 and STI tried to engage their T-95 in the field, which, you know, lol. And bounce on the Type 62, but eventually we'll get them. With no RD loss, at least not from that. Okay, and then T-95 is still in this field, but he's low health, not too worried about that. And let's just mop up from there. And so essentially what we did was was twofold. One is that we spotted through this early center area over here and that allowed us to figure out what they were sending to Hill. It, it allowed some of our team to get a little bit of early damage, not nearly as much as, as you would like. And then it was just a matter of, you know, we, we knew that they were gonna push across the field, but pushing across the field is, is not a very solid play. Don't really uh, know why people still do it, but uh, it does, um, and pretty much everybody in the base is going to die for the most part, and everybody uh, that's on this sort of 890 line will be able to, to just feast on it, on everyone else. It's a trap! 
uh, and then uh, we left the hill, uh, so we needed to, to retake it. Um, the T-30 had a window of opportunity where he potentially could have gone down there, uh, but, you know, he didn't, which is good for us. Um, it was also lucky because we did uh, get some damage on him early so that he was relatively low health, which also sort of prevents him from wanting to, to drive up that hill. So, you know, when you're in a T-30 like that and you get lit back in the sort of B5, B6 area, um, I mean, it was probably more the B5 area, it was probably right around here, um, you don't want to sit there. Um, you know, you can take one shot if you want, but, you know, a good artillery player is going to be able to, to tag you right there. Uh, and that's sort of the problem with, with people coming up this way. Um, if you do come up through the A-line in a slower tank, um, you want to go around through through the back. It makes it much more difficult to, to be detected. And then if you're pushing up the hill, you want to push up through these ditches as well. Uh, Otherwise, uh, it's a pretty straightforward game on uh, Malinovka. So if we look at the stats... Um, we did pretty well. We did about 4k damage on detection, uh, assisted damage, and uh, a little bit under 4k of direct damage. Most of that was to guys that were pushing across the field into, into our base. Uh, and things like that. And, and so it, it's a lot of it is about being opportunistic. This was a lot more damage at range than you normally do with a 1390. The gun handling is, is not really that good. You want to be a little bit closer to your uh, opponents uh, whenever you're shooting at them when you can. Anyhow, so I hope that was helpful for Malnovka and the 1390 and some of the spotting lanes that you can take. Um, and thanks for watching.